Breach Committee, who you may have seen on the web, shorthanded NOC, and the National Coalition for Redress and Reparations, NCRR. She was a performing member of the San Jose Tycho, and I'm really disappointed that you didn't jump in there or just push Roy out of the way. <laughs> now, Susan is one of the founders of San Jose Nikkei Resistors, a very important multi-generational community organization whose mission is to unite, mobilize the Japanese American community. So thank you, Susan, for staying so current and continuing to evolve as, unfortunately, a new evolve. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Susan Hayase. <laughs> Thank you, Jams, um, and thank you, Kurt, for writing this wonderful book. I just want to say something really quick about the differences between the two editions. So one of the errors that was corrected, and maybe it makes the first edition like really valuable. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was interviewed, and I, I said multiple times, I said the phrase, former internees but the person who transcribed it heard attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's why I say former incarcerees now, because I can't think of any word that sounds like incarcer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, you know, so San Jose Japantown, a journey is a huge accomplishment uh, because it's a community source book. Uh, the richness of the lives of the people that it, uh, that it captures is truly remarkable and we thank everybody who had a hand in this incredible and wonderful collaboration. So thank you Kurt and Ralph and Jim and all the people who were involved in that. Thank you. All right, now Susan is also the co-director of the Hidden History San Jose uh, Japantown, an augmented reality uh, project where if you play Pokemon Go for example, uh, it's it's a you look and use the camera around and you see other cool digital stuff pop up and other. We've also been privileged to work at the Hidden History of San Jose Japantown project with Susan. Yeah, hey, you, you're causing a ruckus on the street. I know, I know. Throughout Kurt's career, uh, Kurt has worked as a cinematographer, professional photographer, a writer, teacher, historian. He worked with um, Edward James well, almost right. Yeah, stand and deliver. All right, Kurt, uh, you did a project. I know. A long time ago, but it always stuck out with me. There was a GI Joe project. <laughs> Can't find that book anymore. I think, right? Out of it, it, it went out of print in one month. No, but we need that. <laughs> On the front of this book, you'll see two names. One is Ralph Pierce. One is uh, Kurt Fukuda. Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Fukuda. Thank you. This is the busiest man in Silicon Valley. I mean, I was watching his uh, stream on YouTube, and then here he is here, and he had other things lined up after this event. It's incredible. But anyway, uh, unfortunately, my uh, collaborator couldn't make it today, Ralph Pierce, and so I'm going to be doing uh, some of the thank yous that he and I wanted to do together. And first of all, of course, uh, thank you to uh, uh, Chris and uh, Talene and the whole Jams team, Vanessa, et cetera, uh, for organizing and putting this event together. A little bit about uh, thank yous to um, the team that put together this book, because unfortunately they couldn't be here. Uh, we have Ralph Pierce, and Ralph is really the historian of this project. His uh, expertise was uh, in sports. I had just finished the, uh, the book on the San Jose Asahi and Zebra's uh, baseball team. For the for the museum for the Japanese American Museum, he ended up writing a lot more of the book, and he was a great collaborator. He is so detailed oriented; he makes up for everything. I, I just don't. Know. <laughs> a lot of the reason why the book finally got printed, he really made sure the team kept on on course. I immediately recognized that the book would be important not only locally but also on a, on a bigger scale. Those of you. Shop at Nikkei Traditions, owned by uh, Jim Nagareta and Jim, but he really is the mayor of Japantown. <laughs> he he really knows everybody. I'm in Japantown, so it's easy for me to go around and ask people who is this person in this photo. His heart is here in Japantown, and he was the first person I tur turned to when I was thinking about this project in 1999. Originally, this was going to be a uh, multimedia project. It wasn't supposed to be a book. And Jim and I would go out and we would start photographing on the streets of Japantown. We would set up a tripod right in the middle of the street with cars like pass. Jim has been with the project ever since. He coordinated with Jams and getting it printed. He coordinated with all the uh, 
all the merchants. Project lead is kicking everyone's butt and telling them to get their stuff done. Um, as you look at the book, you'll notice it's, it's, it's a really beautiful book and that's because of the designer Janice Oda. Janice, her, her aesthetics, her sense of design is just beautiful. More than anything, I wanted it to look important. Um, have a feel that it had value. The book looks great because of Janice. And then our, our final uh, person on our team is June Hayasi, who's the editor. And of course, as the writer, I had a uh, love-hate relationship <laughs> with her. She, she removed all my contractions, so. As each chapter was completed, then they give it to me and then I do go over all of these things. So she was really, really invaluable to her and she was probably the sweetest person on earth. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank all the wonderful people who uh, allowed us to use their photos in the book and to use their stories who allowed us to interview them. There's so many. Every story could almost be a, a mini book. And, you know, I, I put a great thanks out to people we didn't interview because, you know, there, as you might guess, there are a zillion stories that didn't make it into the book because we either didn't have the space or the time or even knew about it. I, I know this book is about the history of San Jose, Japantown, but it's a lot more. It involves the history of the Chinese community, the Filipinos, the African Americans who settled here, and I really encourage everyone to like explore that because the book is a lot more than the title. My friend and fellow history detective, as we call ourselves, Robert Ragsack, took a copy of the book to the uh, Filipino American History Center in Stockton. The people there at the museum looked at the book and said, well, why? What do we want a book about San Jose, Japantown for? He had to show them the book chronicles the earliest Filipinos who settled in this valley. So there's a lot about the book, and the book even goes beyond the uh, ethnic heritage of the community. It also goes into the cultural uh, heritage of this community, which is very rich. My neighbors a couple weeks ago told me, hey, we, we just uh, went to a, an open studio at a place called the Citadel in San Jose on Martha Street. It was terrific. Do you know about it? And I go, yes, there's a whole section on the Citadel <laughs> in the San Jose Japantown book because the Citadel actually started in one of the canneries on the, right on the edge of Japantown. There are pictures, there are stories and interviews of the people who started the Citadel. Works was here in Japantown for a while. And so there's a whole section on works, a uh, gallery called the Gray Box, which was very infamous. In fact, it was so infamous, they had one exhibit where they actually had to have rolls of paper on top of the art. And the only way you could see the art is you had to roll up the paper to look at it because the art was considered controversial. That was here on Jackson Street in San Jose, Japan town. And uh, one more art story. When Works was here, I went to a performance by Fakir Musafar, who's into body piercings and bo body alteration. And he had his crew of men and women, and they were all naked, and they were like doing rituals, including carving each other's wood razor blades. And I was sitting there going, oh my god. This is San Jose, Japan town. <laughs> and it, this is happening, and outside, is the uh, Nikkei Matsuri, <laughs> so, you know, just please, uh, you know, explore the book. There's a, there are a lot of stories and you'll be actually surprised at how rich this, this community is. And uh, for those of you who cook, uh, there, at uh, this old restaurant on 6th Street, which was called Ken Ying Lo, is a famous Chinese restaurant. They, the cook, uh, Butasan, had a uh, recipe for a shisong, and if you look in the San Jose Japan Town book, in one of the hidden Easter eggs, in one of the uh, uh, footnotes, is the recipe for shisong. <laughs> so, it's a living, it's a natural community where people come to shop, to socialize, people live here. And that's, I think, what brought us all together, was that we wanted to document uh, Japantown and we wanted to leave this for future generations to uh, also enjoy. When you're coming to Japantown you're not just getting what you're picking up 
you're giving back to the community. So thank you for giving back today. We really, you know, this was all volunteer work and it was all not for profit and... Everyone really cares about the community. And you can see the love with which Kurt holds this area. Check the website because it's constantly got stuff going on. You're always needing to know what's going on down here. Take care folks and drive safe. If you could uh, come to the sun's here, we would like to present you with a signed copy of the Chantal Book. She's in it. Uh -huh. She snuck you on the cover. Yeah. Look in the back. Yeah. The dog? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not the dog. Not the dog. Yeah. <laughs>